We're sitting at a wood-paneled Davos-like bar, and there's a very famous Secretary of Treasury sitting somewhat near us, and you and I walked through the excesses of 05, 06, and you nailed 2008. Are we there again? Yes, we're here again, but in addition to the economic, monetary, and financial risks, and there are new ones. Mm -hmm. Now we're going towards stagflation, like we've never seen <clears throat> since the 70s. In the book, I point out that there are also geopolitical risk, like we're on a confrontation with some revisionist powers like China, Russia, Iran, or Korea that are challenging the geopolitical order mm -hmm. of the US and the West, and that's going to lead potentially to conflict. There are environmental risks that are very severe. There are health risks coming from pandemics, and there is a relation between global climate change right. and pandemics. There are technological risks coming from AI, machine learning, robotic automation, destruction of jobs. There's a backlash in, against globalization, and we're going to go to a world that is deglobalized. There are political risks. We have polarization and we have radical extremist party of the extreme right and extreme left coming to power, both in advanced economies and in emerging markets. And on top of it, we have amount of the debt like we've never seen before, explicit debt well, that's and implicit go. as that's well. That's right where I want to so go. So it's a confluence of all these mega threats, Lipsky, 10 of them together. Lipsky at IMF yeah. was heated about the debt buildup. On the yeah. back of your book, you've got a guy named Rogoff from Harvard, Bremer of Eurasia, Dr. Larian from Cambridge, Martin Wolf, always wonderful at the FT. And at the very top, the quote of the season from Taleb, the gravity's return to the physics. We've got a higher real yield now. We've got a risk-free rate now. What are the ramifications in our economic system that the gravity's return to our physics? Well, there were many insolvent agents in the economy because uh, private and public debt as a share of GDP has gone from 200% to 350 globally between 2000 and today. In advanced economies, more like 420 and rising. In the US, is now higher than after the Great Depression and after World War II. And we're not out of a Great Depression or a major war. And until now, even if you had zombie households, corporates, banks, shadow banks, governments, countries, they were built out. They were built out during the global financial crisis, zero policy rates, negative, quantity easing, credit easing, and even during the COVID crisis, many of them were fragile. They were built out again. We went back to, get, to do even more of the same. This time around, instead, is different because we have so much debt and central banks like the Fed have to increase interest rates to fight inflation. So the zombie institutions are going to go bankrupt. That's why not only we're going to have inflation and stagflation, but we'll have a stagflationary debt crisis. In the 70s, we had negative supply shock, 73, 79, but we had very low debt ratios. So we didn't have a debt crisis in advanced economies. We had one in Latin America. Argentina, Mexico, Brazil borrowed too much in the 70s. When Volcker jacked up pre interest rates to 20%, they went bankrupt. After the GFC, we had the debt problem, mortgage debt, housing debt, bank debt, and we had a debt crisis, but it was a negative aggregate demand shock, and therefore we had low inflation and deflation. Today, we have the worst of the 70s with a massive amount of stagflationary negative supply shock. In the book, I identify 11 new ones over the medium term. And at the same time, we have debt ratio like we have never seen before. So we get stagflationary debt crisis. Well, don't 